Michigan International Speedway feels like a lifetime from Detroit, but did you know this very area was a major stopping point on the stagecoach trail between Detroit and Chicago in the 1800s? So let's fast forward 100 years. If it wasn't for one race in 1901, pictured here, Ford Motor Company may not have ever been. Kelly Stavis went back in time, sort of, with Brad Kozlowski to recreate history and give us a better understanding of how Ford came to be. What a lovely day here in the Irish Hills of Michigan. Oh, Mr. Kozlowski. Can I trouble you for a ride? Absolutely, my lady. I'd be more than obliged to give you a ride in my 1901 Ford sweepstakes car. Thank you. Kelly, this is a really, really important car. Henry Ford took this car to a racetrack here in Michigan, Detroit, won the race, and used the funds to start the Ford Motor Company. Well, jump on in. Let's go. Let's go. Get through right here. Whoop. Andy knew how to get in a little better than I did. Ah, there we go. Ah. That thing right there will get you. So Henry had an onboard mechanic. So it wasn't Paul Wolf back in the pits. This was very, very early technology. So just to keep the car running was a major accomplishment. In fact, that was one of the ways that Henry Ford won. <laughs> Let's go. This is the first time this car has been on this racetrack. This is its natural environment, a racetrack. Natural track. environment, racetrack, Michigan International Speedway. What's its top speed? This car will go 70 mile an hour. You want to find wow. 70 mile an hour? Well, I don't think I want to. How about we get it up to 50? What do you think? Okay. All right, let's go. Imagine racing one of these things. There's no seat belt. I don't know how they did it. Got to get my hat secure in here because I'm about to lose it. How tough is it to drive? You need about four hands to do it right. I can understand exactly why he needed a mechanic, Kelly. Right. What do you think it would be like having Paul Wolf strapped alongside, holding on for dear life? You know, it'd be really easy to get rid of him. <laughs> we got to pull this baby into victory lane. Wow, what an amazing experience. Amazing car with an amazing story. Okay. Without this car, so much of our world would be different. I love history. I love motorsports. This car is both. Mr. Kozlowski, that was truly an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for the ride. They might not have said cool back in 1901, <laughs> but that was cool. <laughs> That was cool. Well, she covered diving at the Olympics. Kelly, you probably had no idea that you'd be traveling from Rio back in time to 1901. No, I didn't, but what a thrill that was, Chris. I've gotten to, to do some pretty cool things. I rode in a two-seater Indy car with Mario Andretti. Brad actually took me on a ride along in a two-seater NASCAR uh, at Texas last year, but this was truly the most exhilarating. I think because of the uniqueness and the history of that car and just to know that um, it's so rare to have an opportunity like that. And I tell you, at 50 miles an hour, if we even got going that fast, it felt about 200 around here with very little to hold on to. I think you should pit report today in the bonnet and the dress. <laughs> Everybody loved the hat, right? <laughs> well, that's how the ladies did it. They had to wear the scarf and tie it around uh, their necks. And I can tell you those clothes, it's, there, there's not the uh, Nike dry tech <laughs> fit in those. I, it's like layer after layer of of sweat after a while is really what it became. Great job, have fun today in the pits. Thank you so much. You know, everything's in the right spot. The switches are where they typically are. The shifters located in the same spot. Yeah, the mass production the versus the specialty you know, work that they do. But I think that they truly appreciate it and 